and one of the things that I want to do is I want us to play a game. And the game is called, let me get this sharing right. The game is called Emoji, a restaurant's emoji edition. Now, this is how it's going to work. All right, I'm going to show you. Okay, so, and you got to turn on your video for this so I can see your faces. Uh, I want to show you because I want to have access to the chat right now. Um, let me show you. Uh, it's real simple. These are the instructions. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna decipher the phrase when you know the answer. Be the first one to raise your hand. Okay, so you got to raise your hand. All right, and I'll give you a chance to answer it. And uh, if not, I'll go to the second one that I saw that did it. And if and so forth. So the, the winner will get a gift card to a fast food place. Uh, on me, so, and, um, so here is, are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I am. Okay. All right, here is the first one. If you know Burger what it King. is. Or, I know it, I know it, man. All right, I saw Ethan first. Ethan, what is it? Burger King. Burger King, point for you, sir. Good job. It is Burger King. All right. What about this one right here? Ooh, I know. I know. Oh. Chris, what is it? Red Lobster. Red Lobster. That is correct, sir. Very good. Very good. All right. What about this right here? Ooh, I know. I know. Oh, me. Chris. Taco Bell. Taco Bell, very good. Taco Bell, very good. Yes, sir. All right, let's see who's joining us. Who's joining us right now? Somebody jumped in. All right, I think it's Christy that joined us. All right, what about this one? What is this one? I know it. Will. TGI Friday. No, not TGI Friday. Dang. I know it. Christy. Outback Steakhouse. Yes, oh. Outback Steakhouse. Oh. Very good. All right, what happened? Um. Oh, I don't know. Chris. Oh. Applebee's. Yes, it is Applebee's. Applebee's. Very good. What about this one right here? Oh, I know. Chris. What's that? Panda Express. Yes, it is Panda Express. What? Man, what's a Panda Express? Exactly. I don't it's know Chinese either. It's food. It's really good. It's actually really good Chinese hey, food. I, I ain't no Chinese <laughs> food in a while. <laughs> they have them in Branson. I saw it. Oh, I know this one. Oh, I just realized what it is. Yeah. Uh, I believe that this is called Dairy Queen. Uh, it is Dairy Queen. Good, good job, sir. All right, what about this one? Me. What I got it. Is that? All right, who said me? Me. I did. <laughs> All right, Ethan. <laughs> I heard Ethan split second before Christy. Cheesecake oh. Factory? Yes, that's correct. I was right. robbed. I've never heard of that. <laughs> I, 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 have, I don't even know the place. I just heard my mom say All right. It. What about this one? What the heck is that supposed to be? Wait. Me. All right, Ethan. Avocado payday. No. <laughs> Burrito avocado payday. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Okay, that first one, is that a burrito or like an egg roll? It's I'm not really sure. A burrito. Oh, I can't see what that okay. is. Okay. It's a burrito, <laughs> avocado, and money. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. It's an place. Club Pink one. <laughs> it's like the subway <laughs> of Mexican food. Ben? What is, what is that one in Call My Taco or something? Nope, not Taco Bueno. Oh, oh me, yeah, me. that's what I was thinking. Ethan. Taco Loco? No, not Taco Loco. Oh. <laughs> okay, what? that might not be a thing. I just thought might have gotten me. I up. know it. I know. Will. On the border? No. 
I tried. <laughs> I bet you know. Uh, Noah, do you know what it is? Oh, I got no idea. I was playing Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like Good is another Stop update. It. Is another update good? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Cool. All right, let's okay, I think we give up. What is it? Well, yeah, I'll give you one more hint. Okay, I can't give this one hint because my family will know it automatically. Um, but it's like Taco Bell, ex ex except more expensive. Gourmet Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the answer. I, I mean, I'm, it's like a, I know what you're talking about, but I do not know what it's called. Oh, they have one in Conway. I've only eaten there oh, once, so Chipotle. how would I know that? Man, Chipotle. who knows what Chipotle is? Man. Chipotle's? I yeah, I would never, time. never have this got that. Worth, this next one, this is the last one, so it's going to be worth 30 points. Are you ready? Mm, yeah. Here it is. Oh, me, 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 me. What me. in oblivion? Me. Five guys, burgers, and fries. Oh my gosh, this is correct. It's five guys, burgers, and fries. I've never yeah. heard of that place. Never. It must be one of those restaurants that's out of state. It's very much state. like a David's Burgers, except not as good as David's Burgers. So. Yeah, they have yeah. one in Little Rock, and it's pretty good, but David's, David's burgers, burgers is way better. better. Though. Yeah, yeah David's, but, David's Burgers is where it's at. But um, I think I should probably I could probably, I bet you I could make my own and make it just local stuff that we all know. So, all right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna spend some time talking about what does it mean to see in our faith? What does it mean for us to, you know, what does that look like in our lives? We're gonna be spending the next several weeks looking at the parable of the blind man, a blind Bartimaeus, and so we're gonna pray. Then we're gonna sing a couple songs tonight. Uh, these are songs that uh, you guys know. We're gonna sing "Grace and Hallelujah," and then "Your Grace is Enough." And so um, this is a time for us to worship. This is just for, you know, this is, this is a time for you to talk to your camera. Uh, I do ask that you engage in worship. So if you're playing a game, <clears throat> Minecraft, or if you're doing something else, put that aside for the next few moments. Unless, like, you're, unless somebody's life is on the line, then please don't let go of that person. Get them to safety, and then y'all can celebrate and worship. And so um, that was Lane that just came in. Hey, there's Lane. Hey, buddy, we're fixing to have worship right now. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, man. Drop it. And Ty's with you. What's up, Ty? What's up? Good to have you guys. We're gonna pray and then we're gonna we're gonna have a time of worship. Father God, thank you so much for today, and thank you for just allowing us to be here. Father, I pray that you just uh, you be with us, Father. That that you speak to us during our time of worship and our time of spending time in your word. We'll see you next pray. Amen. Father, thank you so much for just that you love us, that, that you care about us, that you desire to be in a relationship with us, Father. Lord, I pray that you be with us as you spend time in your word tonight. It's despite the, the, the glitches of technology, despite the issues with that, Lord. Thank you so much for being a God who hears us. That's in your name I pray. Amen. Tonight, uh, we're talking about this series called I Want to See, and tonight it's all about, uh, it's all about crying out, and, and uh, hold on, just one minute. And so, we're going to spend some time in, in reading God's Word, but I want to, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever, like, been blinded before? Have you ever, have you ever like been temporary blinded or, or or like you know you just see for whatever reason has that ever happened to you if that's happened to you if you would uh raise raise a hand you can turn on your video if you want or if you want to leave it off that that's fine uh, i would love to see your faces but um you know if you uh if you have ever been blind if you've ever been temporary blinded if you would just raise your hand let me know that you've been that, that there have been times when you've been temporary blinded like for instance, for me, let me let me just tell you the story. Um, I haven't been like fully, fully blinded, but I've been close to being blinded. I remember as a kid, when I was a little kid, I think it was about like six or seven. Um, it wasn't anything long term, but it definitely wasn't permanent as far as not being able to see. But 
um, I was at that school and there was this kid and this kid was just like a punk. For whatever reason, him and I never like never became friends. In fact, from day one, this guy hated my guts. Don't know why, but he just hated my guts. Uh, he he didn't he didn't like me at all. He was a bully, and I think it was because I was taller than him, and he was in a grade old, uh, higher than me. Um, but I didn't I didn't just didn't like him. I just he didn't like me. He would pick on me. I did nothing to to, to do that with him, but he was just kind of this punk. He was mean, he was foul mouth, um, and he just, like I said, he didn't like me, he hated me. And so uh, he also made sure that I knew that, that I, that, that I knew that he did not like me. Uh, him and I, we ended up doing a lot of things together. When I started doing, uh, doing this thing, that was like, it was like Christian Boy Scouts. Uh, at a French at a French church, and, and I, would, I remember seeing him there. Somebody's got their mute their mic on. If you will, uh, if you will uh, mute your mic, I'm not sure whose it is, but I can either hear chewing or something. But um, but uh, I went to this I went to this like Christian Boy Scouts. It was called Brigade, and I went there. And I remember the first time I went there, I look, and lo and behold, it's this kid, and this kid's name is Christian. And I'm like, oh, what? Because like I, I never knew him to ever talk about his his faith. Never talk about going to church. Um, he was just so like I was like kind of shocked and surprised that he was there. But he was even mean to me there. He was like rude and hateful. Um, he was he was just like a he was a punk. Just to be honest, he was a punk. And um. And so, uh, you know, one day, though, we were at school, and we were all just playing. You know how you do it, like, recess, where people just start playing together. And I was playing with a group of friends, and, and, and this kid, like I said, his name is Christian, um, and, which is ironic his name Christian, because he did. He was not very Christian in his attitudes. But um, he started playing with us. And we were playing tag, and I was it, Okay. And Christian ran to the school fence, and I was running after him because I was it. And and I should have stopped and thought, hey, this guy doesn't like. I wasn't thinking about that. I was a kid. I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna get this him. I'm gonna get him. He's right there, stuck in a corner at the fence, about to tag him. I go to tag him, and his back was to me. He turns and takes a stick in his hand and shoves it into my eye. It was painful. I Next thing I know, I mean, because it hurt so bad. And he just kind of laughed about it and called me a baby for crying about it. I mean, I was screaming. I was crying. It was, I was in pain. Um, I don't remember what happened to him after that. I'm assuming that I'm trying to, I'm trying to hope that he did get in trouble. I don't remember anything like that. But for me, I ended up having a scratched cornea. You know, the, the circle part of the eye, you know, not the inner one, but the, but the, but the one that's on the outside, you know, like, you know, I think it's the color one, you know, I'm not really, I'm not an optometrist, so sorry. But, um, you know, I get this scratch cornea and I had to wear a patch over my eye and I had to have medication and I couldn't open my eye, I couldn't have it open, I couldn't, you know, I had this patch on top of my eye being closed. And even to this day, I can't see in a straight line. I kind of, my lines always look crooked to me. And they probably are crooked because I can't really see in a straight line because my eye, the, the way it healed was, is misshapen. And so but for about a week or two, I was blind in that eye. And I couldn't see. So frustrating. It was so hard. It was so difficult. Well, Another time was uh, a couple of years ago um, when I was kind of even, you know, kind of close to being blind was when I had my eyes dilated. Now, I don't know if you've had your eyes dilated, but I can tell you this. It's the worst. It's the worst. You don't want to have your eyes dilated. I mean, I mean of course, if you have to, you have to. But I promise you, it's not a fun feeling. Everything looks weird and you can't see um, and, 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 you know, people that told me, oh, it's not a big deal. You just, you just wear some sunglasses the rest of the day. No, it was a super big deal to me. That was lied to. And I felt, I was like, I can't, I was wrong. 
because I was expecting like a nice relaxing thing. No, I didn't feel good because I couldn't see right and, and my, it might hurt my eyes and it just didn't make me feel great. And I was just like, this is the, this has got to be one of the worst things. So maybe you've had a, a similar experience to that. Maybe something injured your eye or where you couldn't see for a time being or or maybe uh, maybe you've had your eyes dilated or something like that to where you couldn't see. But what about the blindness in the other areas of our life? Because sometimes we don't stop and think about what are some areas in our life that we are blind to. Have you ever felt like like you just can't see what God has for your future? Maybe you know those of you that are seniors or graduating. You're kind of trying to figure this out, and it's like this fog, and you just and you feel like you can't see, or maybe you're just trying to figure out how you know you're trying to think about the future or something like that, and you just, especially with this pandemic going on, and you just can't see, and the picture's just blurry. Or maybe instead of your future, maybe you got something going on in your life right now that you need help with. Maybe it's friendships. Or maybe it's family or school or even sports or maybe even a job. Maybe you're struggling with something that's happening at your job when you're in trouble. Well, wherever you are, what would it look like? Hey, there's Amy. What would it look like for you to approach Jesus with what's on your heart? You ever just have one of those moments where you're just open and honest and you're talking straight with Jesus? What would it look like for you to ask him to help you see? I want to read this passage from, uh, from the Bible about a blind man who had a life-changing experience, this life-changing encounter with Jesus. And I believe this blind man's experience is a very important message for those of us who feel, who often feel blind and need help, need guidance. So if you would, you can grab your Bible or maybe you got to, you know, grab your Bible, whatever that looks like to you. We're going to look at Mark 10, uh, Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. I'm going to have it on the screen for you guys. But Mark 10, it's chapter, yeah, Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 46 and going to 52. This is what it says. It says this. It says, uh, they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples in a large crowd, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many warned him to keep quiet. But he was crying all the more, have mercy on me, son of David. And when Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man and said to him, have courage, get up, he's calling for you. He threw off his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. Then Jesus answered him, what do you want me to do for you? Rabboni, the blind man said, I want to see and Jesus said to him, go, your faith has saved you. Immediately he could see it again and began to follow Jesus on the road. Now that's an awesome story. I mean, this man named Bartimaeus was a blind beggar in Jericho. And apparently he had to be a little bit well known because everybody knew who his family was. And so this guy is here and, and he realized that Jesus was in his neighborhood and he was, uh, and, and word had gotten, already gotten out about Jesus, and people knew who Jesus was. They had heard stories about some of the things that he was doing. People were talking about his teachings. They were talking about his miracles. They were saying things like, oh my gosh, you see, Jesus did this. Jesus did this awesome thing. Or Jesus said this other thing. Like, there, like there were these guys trying to trick Jesus, and Jesus realized that. And so when, but, so Jesus answers, he gives this answer, it's like, boom, just awesome. And so these people that knew and they heard about Jesus, they knew about his stories. And so people were talking because they knew he was coming to, he was coming to town. They saw him from way off, saw him coming towards town. 
And so blind Bartimaeus thought, this is my chance. I'm sick and tired of being blind. And if this is the Jesus that everyone has been talking about, then I'm going to ask him to heal me. And he does. And Jesus heals him. So what does this have to do with you and me? What's this? Whenever you feel blind about something in your life, whenever you're struggling with something, you can follow the lead of Bartimaeus and go to Jesus. Bartimaeus made a choice. I am through living this blind life. I'm going to go to Jesus and ask him to help me, to have mercy on me. There's four things that, that we can consider with this, and we're going to unpack these four things over the next several weeks. And the first thing is to cry out. In fact, this is the thing. You need to cry out. You as a believer, me as a believer, we need to be open and honest and vulnerable and cry out to God, cry out to Christ in our moments of need. Look what he says in verse 47. Look what, it, what Mark says. He says, when he heard that it was Jesus, son of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus had an issue, and he wanted to talk to Jesus about it. It doesn't say that Bartimaeus was like, um, excuse me, Rabbi? No, he wasn't like, you know, if it's just too much trouble, if it is, you know, never mind. But if it, you know, can I get just a moment? No, that's not what happens. He says, Jesus, have mercy on me. He cries out to, he cries out to Jesus. And what does Jesus do? Jesus does not say, oh, forget you. Jesus does not say, I'm sorry, I'm too busy. Jesus says this, bring him in. Tell him. The blind man cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And you and I are just like Bartimaeus. We've heard about all the incredible things that Jesus can do. And we know that we have access to him through prayer. But how often do we cry out like to Jesus like Bartimaeus did? I'm not saying that you have to go up into your room and, and scream at Jesus. You know, I'm not saying that. Please don't, please don't go in your room and, and start yelling out, out to Jesus, you know. But what I am saying is, because this is the big takeaway for us tonight, for you, is this is that when you recognize your need for Jesus, just like Bartimaeus did, he recognized his need. But he doesn't, he didn't just recognize his need and then just you know sit there and be like, oh well, I need Jesus, but there's nothing I can do. He recognized how he needed Jesus, and in that moment, he acted on it. When you recognize your need for Jesus. You need to be serious about it, and you need to be passionate about it. By crying out, Bartimaeus shows just how curious, how serious he was about his need. For you, if you have a need in your life, you need to cry out to Jesus. So let's kind of pause there. We'll pick up more things that we can pull from the story, but for you tonight, it's what in your life is it that you have a need for Jesus to answer? Think about what you're going through right now. Think about the season with, with the pandemic and everything that's happening. How, think about this week was supposed to be high school camp at Cold Springs. We're not there. Think about all the things that have had to change because of this pandemic. Think about the things that you've had to go through and you've had to experience and you've had to see. Think about the stuff that's happening in your life. And this is a stressful time for everyone. The longer it goes on, the more difficult it becomes. 
Maybe you just got some stuff in your life and, and the longer it, you're dealing with, maybe for you, it's not the pandemic that's really got you bothered or got you struggling. Maybe for you, it's the simple truth that you are going through this particular situation in your life. And the longer it goes on, the worse it gets. You may be feeling anger or loneliness or frustration. And Jesus here, he sees your pain. He cares. So my scripture teaches, cast all your care on him because he cares for you. It goes on to say, do not worry about anything but by prayer and, and petition. Present your requests to God. So a couple questions I want you to be thinking about as we close tonight is this. Number one, where do you feel aligned? Maybe it's the future. You're just not sure what's going to happen. You don't know what you need to do with your life. And while you may feel blind about it, God knows. What are you struggling with? Maybe you're struggling with, with your mouth. Maybe you're struggling with some of the things you're saying or posting or, or you know, whether you're posting on, on Instagram or TikTok or wherever it is that you're posting. Maybe some of the things that you're posting. Maybe you need to realize that that is a blind spot in your life because what you're posting is not helping you. Maybe for you, your struggle is you're, you're struggling with something else. You're, you're struggling in an inappropriate relationship and you're struggling with, with some sort of an, of an addiction or something. So what are you struggling with? You know, those areas that you feel blind and those areas that you're struggling with, you are, you're probably thinking about them right now. So the question for you is, what does it look like for you today to cry out to Jesus? And sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Guess what? If it's a big deal to you, if it's something that you're dealing with, if you're struggling with, if it matters to you, guess what? It doesn't, it doesn't matter what it, how it feels to anybody else because if it matters to you, it matters to God. You need to be like Bartimaeus when Jesus, when he, when, he, when he knew that Jesus was there, he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So be like Bartimaeus and cry out because I can tell you this, Jesus answered him and he will answer you. So cry out to him. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for just allowing us to be here. Thank you so much for those that are able to come in. Father, Lord, I pray that, that you remind us to cry out to you, Father. I pray that we do that, that the things in our lives that we're struggling with, Father, I pray that we cry out to you for help to where we can, we don't have to be blind to these areas. We don't have to struggle in these areas anymore because we have given them to you and we're trusting in you, Lord. Father, I pray that we do that, that we follow blind Bartimaeus' example and cry out to you. Be with us, Lord, the rest of this week. And it's in your name I pray. Amen.